Hey students, let's talk about the law of conservation of energy. Have out your science notebook or piece of paper and let's get started. Let's start with the essential question written at the top of your page. How do, you, how do chemical reactions obey the first law of thermodynamics? Well, what is thermodynamics? Thermodynamics is the study of energy, typically in the form of heat, thus the prefix thermo. Now, energy in science is the capacity to do work or produce heat. Energy is a measurement. We measure energy in a unit called joules. You might not be familiar with this energy, this unit, as much as you are a different unit that's directly related to it, and that's calories. Remember, anytime you eat food, you can look at the nutritional facts, and it's written in calories. Well, calories is directly related to the unit of joules because it's a, just a unit of net energy. There's 4,184 joules for every food calorie that you see on a nutritional facts. Now, there's two types of energy that we should be familiar with. There's potential energy and kinetic energy. We're going to apply these two main forms of energy specifically to chemical potential energy and chemical kinetic energy. Remember, the word potential means stored. So chemical potential energy is energy that's stored in a substance, typically in the substance bonds and the shape of the atoms and how the atoms are interacting with one another. The chemical Kinetic energy, on the other hand, is energy that's released from these substances, typically in the form of heat and electricity. So I wanted to give you an example of chemical potential versus chemical kinetic energy. Here I have a canister of liquefied butane. Now this butane is not reactive. It is in a potential energy state. We know that it has stored energy because if we were to light it on fire, it would combust, which I'm gonna do right now. So we're gonna take this butane from its potential energy state and turn it into a kinetic energy state. Let's talk a little bit about temperature versus heat. There are two different things that sometimes we use interchangeably and we really shouldn't. Temperature is a measurement typically in Kelvin or Celsius in science. And the measurement is the average kinetic energy of the particles in a sample of matter. There's also heat, which is a little bit different. Heat is measured in joules. And remember, heat is the energy of these particles. It's the total of the kinetic energy, or it's the total of the movement of the particles. Take a look at these pictures on the right. You notice the one on the far left, we have particles that aren't moving very fast. That's the heat of the particles. That's the amount of energy that they have. Now we can measure that energy using a tool called the thermometer, but that thermometer is only measuring the average of that box. If we move to the right, we have a lot more, we have particles that are moving a lot more, that are moving faster, and the temperature is also increased. The average temperature has, the average kinetic energy of the particles have increased. So again, heat is not temperature, and I wanna give you a, kind of an analogy. I wanna show you this example to kind of prove that. Here we have a cup of ice water. That's what we're gonna be focusing on right now. Now this ice water is being heated up by the flames below. I mean, it's even being heated up by the surrounding air as well. So this ice water does have a constant change in heat. The particles are getting faster and faster and faster. Now, if you were to put a thermometer in this cup, the temperature, would not change. There would be no change in temperature, at least until the ice is gone. What's happening is, is even though the water is being heated up, the ice is cooling that water back down and there's kind of the average uh, temperature, the average kinetic energy of the particles aren't changing much. By the way, two words to know again, the ice water is known as our system. It's what we're focusing our, our thought process on. Everything else affecting our system is called the surroundings. Let's spot, speak a little bit about heat transfer. Heat always transfers from warmer objects to colder objects until they reach equilibrium. And when we say the word cold, cold is just the absence of heat. So if you think about your hand or a fire, there's just heat energy or heat transfer going on. Putting a piece of ice on your hand, your hand is warming up that piece of ice. Energy is transferred from your hand to that ice, causing its energy to increase and causing it to melt or change phase. All right, that brings us to the first law of thermodynamics. The law states that the energy of the universe is constant. This isn't my favorite way to say the law, but it is one way to say it. What they really mean by that is energy cannot be created or destroyed, but it may be converted or transferred from one form to another. Let me give you three examples of energy transfer and how that's applied. One of the examples is a firework, right? If you imagine a firework before it's been lit off, it's a tube full of 
practically gunpowder and salts to give it color. Now in that gunpowder, there's chemicals, there's, there's chemistry, there's chemical bonds, and they're stored, they haven't been released yet, so they're stored in the bonds of those chemicals. The moment we light the firework off and it explodes, it releases the energy from those chemicals, typically in the form of heat and light. And so that's one way that the energy is transferred from one form to another. Another example is the battery in your phone. Now your phone probably has some type of lithium ion battery equivalent, and that lithium ion battery has chemicals in it causing reactions. Those reactions are what give your phone power because the chemical reactions in that battery are being transferred to electrical energy that your phone can use. Now, another example of the transfer of energy is photosynthesis. Photosynthesis is where plants take sunlight energy, typically in the form of electromagnetic energy, and they take that sun energy as well as carbon dioxide and water, and they transfer it into chemical energy, energy stored in the bonds of the plant itself, typically in glucose or sugars. Some of them we can even eat, like vegetables and fruits. Now let's go back to our example of butane. In this form, butane is storing energy in its bonds. It's a chemical potential energy. Now, when butane gets lit on fire, it starts a reaction that releases the energy from these bonds into, into kinetic energy in the form of heat or thermal energy. Let's take a closer look at the molecules of butane and what's happening at this thermochemical equation. So here we have C4H10. That's the molecular formula of butane. Now, typically, there's two moles of butane that react with 13 moles of oxygen, but I'm just going to show you one of each of those particles here. Now, in butane, we have stored energy, and the molecules are really unstable. They want to release that energy. It just takes a little spark, like a flame, to do so. Once that energy, once we go through the reaction, that energy is released in the form of kinetic energy or heat, and those reactants become carbon dioxide and water. Carbon dioxide and water molecules are more stable than they were originally. Now I want to talk about this word enthalpy. You probably saw in the previous slide a delta H, and you might have been wondering what that meant. The delta is a Greek letter, it's a triangle that represents a change in, and the capital H represents heat energy. So enthalpy is the change in heat energy. Now energy can be gained by the reactants, usually designated with a positive delta H, or released by the reactants into the products of a chemical reaction with a negative delta H. Enthalpy is typically measured in joules. Now, how do we represent enthalpy, or how do we represent a change in energy? Well, we can do it in one of two ways. One of them is using an energy diagram, which is just a graph that shows the total energy change over a span of a reaction. Another way to do that is to write down a thermochemical equation, which is just a chemistry equation with enthalpy in it to show us whether there is energy being released or absorbed. So I'm going to give you some examples of that. Here's one example of an energy diagram, specifically for an exothermic reaction. Notice that here we have potential energy over the progress of the reaction. In the very beginning of the reaction, we have these reactants, and they have a certain amount of energy. Now, over time, those reactants are going to do something. They're going to become products, and they could gain or lose energy. In an exothermic reaction, you can see here, typically the energy is being released. We start with a higher amount of energy than we end up with. The products have a lower amount of energy. So this is a negative delta H, a loss of energy to the surroundings. Now, notice this red arrow right here. This is the energy needed to start the reaction. We typically ignore this little beginning bump because the amount of energy used to go into the reaction is usually replaced by the amount of energy from the reaction or vice versa. Here's a thermochemical equation for an exothermic reaction. Here we have reactants on one side of the reaction, and then on the other side we have products plus energy. Don't get confused by this plus. Some students think it means to add. I like to think of it in this situation to mean more of an and. So the reactants go through a reaction and they produce products and some energy is being released. We saw this in butane before, where butane and oxygen react to form carbon dioxide, water, and energy as a product of this reaction because it's being released in the form of heat. Specifically, there might even give you numbers, negative 5,775 kilojoules of energy is being released, which is why it's a negative number.
All right, let's look at the opposite. This is an energy diagram of an endothermic reaction. So an endothermic reaction is the opposite of exothermic. It means to absorb or to gain energy. So we have a positive delta H. Notice here, in the start of the reaction or our reactants, they're starting here. Now over time, there's a little bit of energy. There's some energy that we would need to start this reaction. Well, actually a lot of energy needed to start this reaction. Eventually the reaction happens and our products end up higher than the reactants in terms of the amount of potential energy. So starting with the reactants and ending with the products, we're going to ignore this little bump up here and just look at the total energy change or the enthalpy change. In this case, energy is being absorbed by this amount. And so it's a positive delta H. The thermochemical equation for endothermic reactions looks something like this. We have reactants and energy is part of the reactants. These reactants need to absorb the energy before the reaction happens. Then it's going to create products. An example of this is photosynthesis. Here we have carbon dioxide, water, and some energy, probably energy from the sun. Those go through a reaction and create sugar and oxygen. And so in this, the thermochemical equation, the total energy change is 2,802 kilojoules being added to the reaction. All right, let's do one practice really quick. Here is a graph of that shows the amount of energy change of the reaction. And the question is, what's the total enthalpy of this reaction shown on the right? So we're looking for the energy change. So looking at this, we see that we have a reactants over on the start of our reaction. And the reactants are around 45 kilojoules of energy. Now, I'm going to give it a little bit of energy, and then it's going to create, it's going to go through and create the products. Notice the products are down here in the end. Now, like I was saying, I'm going to give it a little bit of energy. It's called the activation energy, but I'm going to ignore this little bump from here to here. That's just how much energy I need to give the reaction, and then it's going to probably provide a little bit itself. All I really care about is where we start with the reactants, 45 kilojoules, and where we end with the products, 10 kilojoules. So we're going from 45 to 10. To find the total energy change or the enthalpy change, I'm going to take the products, the energy of the products, and I'm going to subtract the energy of the reactants. I'm going to take 10 kilojoules and minus 45 kilojoules. That's going to give me negative 35 kilojoules, which just means that 35 kilojoules of energy were released by the negative number, designated by that negative number. So that's a big hint of our second question. Is this reaction endothermic or exothermic? Well, if energy is being released, then this is an exothermic reaction. All right, the final question is, is how would this reaction feel in your hand? Let's say this reaction was happening in a vessel in your hand, in a container in your hand, and you were holding on to it. What would it feel like? Well, this reaction would feel warm to my hand because it's losing energy to its surroundings. Remember, even though we're thinking about our hands, our system, our system is the reaction. My hand is the surroundings. So the reaction, the system, is releasing energy, or it's losing energy in the form of heat. Now my hand, the surroundings, is gaining that energy. And so it's feeling that heat from that reaction. That's what that would feel like. All right, that leads us to the end of the notes. Please take a moment and go back and review and highlight things that are important, key terms, important concepts. Maybe take a moment and ponder and ask questions. Come up with your own questions. See if you can really test yourself or go and speak to your instructor if you have any further questions than this. And then finally, summarize and answer the essential question of, this, um, of these notes. Good luck. I wanted to give you an example of chemical potential and chemical kinetic energy. Here I have a canister of butane. Now this butane right now is in the form of a liquid, and it's not reacting. It's, nothing's happening to it. Now when we light that energy, when we start that energy's reaction, to kinetic energy. Woo! Of course. Let's go back to our example, butane. Butane has chemical potential energies. Oh. <laughs>
Okay. Energy gets released in the form of kinetic energy.